Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back here today for another game review, a special Kickstarter review. And today we're excited to check out Mutants the Card Game from Lucky Duck Games. This is for two to four players, taking about 45 minutes to an hour to play, I do believe. And it's for ages 12 plus. And in Mutants the Card Game, this is a deck building game that kind of flips the deck building genre on its head a little bit because you're going to have your own personal buy row of cards that you're going to be able to purchase. And you're going to be putting these mutants, I don't actually know what you're doing thematically wise, you're like breeding mutants and fighting mutants and having mutants fight each other. You're trying to get the most points over the course of five rounds by freezing mutants and breeding mutants and incubating mutants and attacking other people and doing all sorts of willy-nilly stuff like that. It At its core, it's a light, simple deck building game, but it's got some really interesting ideas. Do those ideas come across enough for me to warrant recommending the game, though? Let's open it up. I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look, which we're going to get inside of Mutants the Card Game. So before we get started, I do want to mention this is the promotional copy I have in front of me, even though you honestly probably couldn't tell if I didn't tell you. Uh, but there might be some things that might change from here to there, so keep that in mind. So first and foremost, we have a handy dandy rule booklet. It is 12 pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. It's very well done, even though I will say I wish there was like a minor FAQ in the back to, to go over some specific uh, special abilities, and I also wish they covered how the power track worked just a little bit better in the play example. But other than that, like, I wish they would have gave you a three-player example instead of a two-player example. It's one of those rule booklets where you're like, Drew, why didn't you give me a three-player example so I could see it more clearly? But other than that, very well done rule booklet. Should have you up and running in no time at all. And hey, maybe they'll do that in the final version of the game. So in Mutants, what you're trying to do is you are going to be playing over the course of five rounds. You're trying to try to get the most victory points. You're going to get victory points in a variety of different ways. First, you can get victory points from uh, beating other people on this track right here every single round. So that's a good way you're going to be able to earn points. And if you're able to dominate people, have them in the red right there, then you'll gain extra victory points, the little black circles right, squares right there. You're going to gain those victory points by attacking other people. And you'll have attack cards you'll be able to purchase, which will allow you to attack other people. But that's not the only way you can gain victory points. You can gain victory points by freezing people and putting them into your free zone right here. And I'll explain how that works a little bit later. But let's go ahead and go over some of the, some of the components. So first, everybody's going to have their starter deck of cards, which is going to have two aliens, two robots, two demons, two beasts, beasts, two zombies, and two warriors. And each one of these is going to have uh, a different special ability. And there's two special abilities on most cards. First, this is when you play it into your active mutant spot. So for instance, the alien is going to give you one victory point. Now, when he leaves and goes to your discard, which is right down here, uh, he's also going to have a special ability, and most of them will look like that, Boop. where copy the de deploy ability of one of the other mutants. So any one of the other mutants that you have up here, you'll be able to copy that deploy ability when they go down here, which you can sync up with some really juicy special abilities. Uh, the demon is going to let you draw a card and then discard a card, which is good because you can build an entire deck or you can play an entire deck all around just nilling your deck and then discarding and then freezing something. And that's something that I want to mention before we go forward is that there's going to be four pre-constructed decks you'll be able to play with. Uh, the Vicious Cycle, the Cold Hearted, the breed to beat down in the mosh pit. And that'll tell you, uh, it'll tell you your deck list. But this game also will allow you to draft your own cards, which actually does not feel like a chore at all. It's actually a lot of fun. I'll tell you more about that in the pros. Or you can pre-construct your own deck. So this game is going to let you play how you want to play, which, uh, spoilers, I really do like that. Uh, but yeah, go back. We have the robot, draw a card, then discard a card. And also when he just leaves, he's going to give you one victory point. Uh, the beast, you may discard any two cards to gain a mutant to your hand because you are going to have your own personal buy row right here. This is another really interesting aspect of this game. Most games are going to have a buy row for everybody. Your, your Star Realms, your Dominions, your Vikings Gone Wild. Other games like that, there'll be cards that everybody can buy. With this one, you're going to have your own personal deck of cards that you'll be able to purchase, aka these cards right here that you start with. Uh, so that one's going to let you do that. This one is a defense card, and it's got the little shield right there. So plus one victory point and knock down this mutant. So if this guy, this demon gets attacked, you flip it over like this, which is a bummer because you're not going to get the ability on the bottom. But you also are going to get plus one point 
So either way, this card's going to get you plus one or plus two, and it's going to be defending you. This is a very defensive card. Uh, the zombie, one of my favorite cards in the game, going to get you two victory points, and then you may freeze this mutant uh, as soon as it leaves. So that's normally my strategy that I really like, is to get as much of my freeze zone as I can. Not really deal with all the combat. Uh, so then the warrior, plus one, and players dominating you, knock down mutant in the same spot. This is one of those ones where I wish it was just a little bit cute, uh, clear how it works but how it works is uh if someone is higher than you on the life point track they are dominating you and this will allow you to knock down the mutant on the same spot so for instance you say all right this right mutant right here is going to get knocked down so everybody else at the table their right mutant boop gets flipped over but let's go over how the actual game works and there's really three steps you're going to be doing so the first thing is everybody's going to draw six cards and this is at the beginning of each round you're going to draw six of your cards like so so you take a look at your cards and then you are going to do the three actions so the first action is crush the competition so if you ever are the only person not in red then the round immediately over oh, is over uh it didn't happen too many times when we played because you know people don't like to get down here so they'll play defense cards but if that happens rounds immediately over then you move on to two which is ready mutants which means that if you have a mutant right here in your active mutant spot you have to move it either to the left or to the right and that causes a mutant over to so let's just say we have this uh so if we had this what i would most likely do is i'd probably move this guy down which means i immediately would get two victory points Hooray for me. And this guy would go right here. And the reason why you're doing that is because you have to clear space for your active mutant. And ability number three, which is to either deploy a mutant, breed a mutant, or incubate a mutant. Which is actually, boop, right down there. So deploying a mutant is really simple. You're going to take one of the mutants in your hand, and you're going to pop it right there. So, bam, I can just do that, and I would get myself one victory point. Hooray for me. Now... The other thing I could do is I could breed a mutant, and that is how you're going to get these fancy cards into play. So let's see, can I afford to breed a mutant? What you got to do is you got to look at the top left-hand corner to meet the requirements. So I need uh, red and uh, green and red. I need brown and red, or I need purple. It shows two purples, but in actuality, you only need one purple card. So we're going to cheat a little bit. We'll say we did this. We'll just fudge it up a little bit. So I'm actually going to go ahead and buy that. I'm going to buy this purple one. And then you have to discard two, so I'll do purple and orange. I'll discard those in my discard pile, and then I will earn this card right here, and boom, play it down immediately. And it says after you deploy a mutant, you ha may have it leave immediately, which is great because that is uh, means it's going to go down there, and that's one way that you can... Um, kind of nil your deck really quick and get stuff in your free zone because eventually what's going to happen is you're going to try and draw cards from right here and if you can't draw enough cards then you have to reshuffle these cards but whenever you have to reshuffle these cards you get to put a card in your free zone which takes it out of the game it essentially trashes it but it also is going to give you the victory points in the top right hand corner which is very stinking useful uh so there we go that would be my entire entire turn so here's what you're going to do first phase are you dominating everybody? You immediately win the round. Good for you. Doesn't happen too often. Second phase. You're going to have to move your mutant in the middle. If you don't have a mutant in the middle, then you can skip the second phase. Then third phase is you're either going to deploy a mutant from your hand and boom, plop it in the middle, uh, which normally would be open. Uh, breed a mutant, which I just showed you, which is how you're going to kind of buy the cards, that your special cards that only you can buy that you have up here, or incubate a mutant, which is the last action. Now, this is a forward planning action. How it works is you have to discard one of your cards, and then you get to put any one of these, it doesn't matter what the cost requirement is, into your incubator like so. Bam, and it's going to go right there. And then, at the beginning of the next round, before you draw six new cards, it's going to go, bam, on the top of your deck, which is great because you're going to get, uh, you're going to get more, you're going to get one of your nice cards for the cost of only one card. And so there you go. At the end of the round, what you're going to do is you're going to check to see who is winning on the power track. They are going to gain the points up here. And if you're playing with three or four players, then the second and third place will get slightly less points. The person who's in the last place always gets zero points. So, boom, you'll get yourself some points. Let's just say I was dominating. Uh, you will reorder this this track right here based on who is winning the victory point track right there and then you're going to rinse wash and repeat and do that over the course of five rounds at the end of five rounds you're going to see who has the highest number of points on this track plus 
the freeze zone right here. And the cards are generally going to be pretty straightforward. They'll have threes and fours, but some of them are actually really interesting, like this one. So you're going to get one victory point per every purple symbol you have. So you can kind of, and that's where really where the deck construction comes into play. So like this Pit Lord be, would be worth three points, but having this right here, I mean, that'd be six points right there. Uh, now we're talking about uh, two, four, five, uh, ten points right here. Uh, no, it's, it's 16 points. So you could really start stacking up points if you do some forward planning in the game. Uh, but that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to do inside of Mutants, the card game. Over right, then, Mutants, the card game from Lucky Duck Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody, for a variety of different... Over right, then, Mutants, the card game from Lucky Duck Games. Coming to a Kickstarter near you very, very soon. I'll be sure to post that Kickstarter link down below. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. First and foremost, uh, two to four players, <clears throat> restricted player count. Really wish this one went up to five or maybe even had a solo PvE version. That'd be a great way to learn the game as well. Uh, the theme does not come across at all for me. Now, that might be because I'm not familiar with the source material. I have no idea why we're fighting and why we have all these weird creatures and why we're breeding breeding stuff and incubating stuff and freezing stuff. I have no clue what any of this stuff is about. That being said, take that as a nitpick because it didn't actually detract from me playing the game. I still really, really enjoyed this game, as I'm going to tell you in the pros. Spoiler alert. Uh, but... I have no clue what the hell is going on in this game at all. <laughs> Continuing on with the cons, I wish there was like an FAQ, a RADA, a clarification on a couple cards here and there. I think there were two cards in particular where I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is how this card is supposed to work, but not 100% sure. So I wish there was some minor touch-ups in the rule booklet that would clear certain things up. Any other cons I have the game? You know, it's a bummer when you get two, you know what, I can't even say that because it really depends on your play style. I think the biggest comment I have this game is that people are going to want more cards the second they get this box. And I think that was the same uh, issue that some people had with Vikings Gone Wild, but it's less about how much is in the box and more about how great the game is and how much you're going to want more. It's like a Terraforming Mars problem. Like, I want more Terraforming Mars expansions and more cards. Not because there's not enough cards, just because I love the game and I want more. I want more variety. I want more variability. I want more different ways to win. And I don't really have too many cons on this game. Maybe I could say if you don't like deck building games, this one might not be for you, but it does so many different interesting things this game does that I think they went out of their way not to call it a deck building game because while yes, it is technically a deck building game, you're going to start with your hand of 12 cards and you're going to be trashing cards and purchasing new cards. It doesn't feel like your typical deck building game. So let's just get on to the pros because I don't know if I have too many cons in this game. Moving on to the pros, Mute is a card game. It's really great. I really like this game. I really recommend this game. If you're in the market for a two to four player uh, sort of lighter medium weight card game. So what I like about the game. So first and foremost, I want to mention this. I love the fact this game does not tell you how to play it with the special mutant abilities. Because the special mutant abilities are where this game's at. That's what this whole game is about. It's about cards with cool special abilities on it. Like I said, the theme doesn't come across to me. The abilities do. And I love the fact that you can play with these constructed decks and you can just master this deck. And be like, ah, I'm really good at this deck or I'm really good at that deck. And I'm sure that's what they're going to release in the future is more of these pre-constructed decks. But I also love the drafting one. And we tried the drafting one twice and we really like that where you're drafting your cards. So it's like, ooh, this card really sync up with this card. Oh, this card would sync up with this card. Oh, I hope I get another one of these so I can sync up with that card. I really like that aspect of the game. And then for people who are not me, they also have the pre-constructed deck where you can construct your own fine-tuned deck. Like I showed you a card in the middle where it's like you get one victory point per purple. So maybe your whole special card is all just purple. Purple, 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 purple. Crazy numbers of purple. Uh, I also like the fact that there's different ways to win the game and win the round because being... Uh, being, what is it, Decimator, whatever it is, where the round ends early, that's really bad because that person's going to get points. They're going to get a lot of points for doing that. And then everybody else is not going to have their time to get their engine properly churning because at its core, this is kind of an engine building game. You're kind of buying cards that are going to help you do what you want to accomplish and then freezing, aka trashing cards, that might not be helping you along the way. 
I feel like there's a good deal of depth in this game. I feel like it's an incredibly well-designed game, but at the same time, it's easy to learn and easy to teach. I brought it into my classroom. I played it three times with adults, and I brought it into my classroom to see if it would go over well with the kids. It did. They thought it was really cool. Now, uh, I had to kind of put on the kids' gloves because I've been playing with adults, and I was like, all right, I know that I want to try and do this strategy, this strategy, this strategy. I actually ended up losing that game to a girl who was just freezing high point cards, which is a perfectly viable strategy. She was just like, oh, this one's worth four points? I'm going to freeze that. This one's worth three points? I'm going to freeze that. And she ended up winning because of that. Um, I, I saw someone win attacking a lot because they were routinely winning, you know, the points at the end. I feel like it's a very well-balanced game uh, based on only four gameplays, honestly enough. But in the end, Mutants the Card Game is a really stinking cool game. I hope this does very well. I hope they have boatloads of new cards, new expansions, because that's just going to add more variability. I will say, if you play a lot of games, uh, I, I honestly, well, you know what? Maybe not on your first time, but on your second time, do the draft mode. The draft mode just opens it up and opens up those potentials. And then there's cards where you're like, oh, I really want to get to that card. I really want to get to that card. So you're buying cards and you're just hoping to hit that one card. It's like, come on, come out, card. Because you're, uh, it's really cool. Mutants a card game. You couldn't tell. I'm excited. When I get a final version of the game, not a prototype, I'll definitely be keeping it on my shelf. Uh, for the time being, I'm actually going to probably keep the prototype on my shelf, which I don't do too terribly often. But actually, oddly enough, I still have another prototype from Lucky Duck Games on my shelf because, yeah, uh, the crime game. So, yeah, there you go. Mutants a card game. Wholeheartedly recommend checking this one out if you're in the market for a two to four player card game. Definitely one you might want to be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please try to click on that subscribe button down below or in the comments below. Let me know what is, what's a crime, what's the worst crime right now you think you could get away with? Like, you're 100% sure you could get away with that said crime. For me personally, what is something I can get 100% away with? Um, probably stealing stuff from my work. Yeah, I think I'm 100% sure I could, I could get away with stealing stuff from my work. The, the security is so lackadaisical. Well, it's not lackadaisical. It's just I know exactly how the security works. We have no security cameras at all except for the very front door so I, I i'm pretty sure i could just rob my work blind if i really wanted to but that being said like we don't have money i'd be stealing like kids kids stuff which then at that point it becomes about flipping it and that's where you get caught it's like oh this guy's selling three bikes on ebay these are the three bikes you're missing oh this guy works for you wow that's a lot of circumstantial evidence there so yeah flipping would be the hard part but the actual stealing Absolutely, definitely could get away with that. Not that I want to, because I enjoy my job. Because I play kids. I play games like this with kids in class. It's great. But let me know in the comments below. What's the worst crime, the best crime, whichever one you want to think about it, way you want to think about it, that you could commit right now and you know you could get away with it? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.